Southern Sudan, soon to be the Republic of South Sudan, will formally declare independence on July 9, 2011, becoming the world's newest nation and Africa's 54th state. This is a historic moment for the people of Southern Sudan. Despite being confronted by numerous humanitarian and developmental challenges, hopes among the citizens are high. Children believe the new Republic of South Sudan will arrive with fresh opportunities to enable them to pursue life in all its fullness. World Vision has worked with the people of Southern Sudan since the 1980s. The organization operates in five of Southern Sudan's ten states, including Western Equatoria, Northern Bar al Ghazal, and Warap. Alongside government and partners, World Vision works to extend basic services provision for the most vulnerable, including improved access to clean water and sanitation. With Southern Sudan having one of the highest maternity and newborn mortality rates in the world, World Vision focuses its assistance to meet the acute health and nutrition needs among mothers and children in Southern Sudan. According to the UN, the soon-to-be-formed country will have among the worst development indicators in the world. Children from this region agree that much more still needs to be done. Access to education is a particular challenge where only 46% of Southern Sudan's children of primary school age are enrolled in school, making it the second lowest enrollment rate globally. Lack of qualified teachers and learning materials has a severe impact on the quality of education received by children of Southern Sudan. Rebecca Achan from Awail, the capital of northern Bar El Ghazal state, illustrates the hope of children of Africa's newest state. <laughs> At Nzara One Primary School in Western Equatoria State, children sing a song that encapsulates their desire for education. Education is the key to my life, but today I am an open. I am poor. Southern Sudan's health sector is particularly fragile. The health system is characterized by a severe lack of qualified medical staff and limited access to health facilities for the largely rural population. Facilities are ill-equipped, lacking equipment and essential drugs and qualified staff. As a result, children die from preventable diseases. Simon Sanduku, the clinical officer at the World Vision-supported Yambio Primary Healthcare Center in Western Equatoria, illustrates these challenges. In uh, these uh, children under five, we get uh, almost cases, uh, almost uh, uh, let me say eight to ten cases every month with got deaths due to malaria, mostly. Teresa Baptist, an 18-year-old mother, has just arrived at the hospital with her one-year-old child, having walked over eight kilometers only to find there are no medicines. Teresa hopes that health care will be a priority for the new country, ensuring availability of medicines for children. <laughs> Water and sanitation is also a challenge, with up to 90% of the communities lacking access to clean water. This has taken a toll particularly on girls, whose responsibility it is to collect water for the family. Girls often have to walk many kilometers to fetch water at the expense of their education. Joanna El Sapa's experience is representative of what most girls in southern Sudan go through as they juggle household chores and school without time for play. El Saba has to endure long treks to school and back home to begin another long journey to a water point. 
She talks emphatically about her wishes that the government will ensure every child has access to safe drinking water. The security and peace of southern Sudan is unpredictable, raising particular concerns for child protection. Sporadic attacks by the Lord's Resistance Army in western Equatoria, conflict over the contested Abye region, and inter-south tensions have displaced children and their families from their homes. Some have been separated from their parents and lack access to basic services. A Chai Deng is a 15-year-old internally displaced person from Abye, now living in Block 14 in Kwajok Town in Warap State, where many persons displaced by the conflict have also sought refuge. She embodies the challenges faced by children displaced by war. Humanitarian organizations like World Vision are working to establish child-friendly spaces. The spaces serve as areas where children can play without discrimination or violence under the supervision of adults. World Vision has established uh, several child safe space centers, which are recreation centers for children, centers where children have adults that they can talk to, centers where children have social workers that they can talk to, a center where children can meet as children and talk about what uh, concerns them. Southern Sudan's transition to independence comes with much hope and aspiration from the children, previously invisible, but now on the front line, aware that the future belongs to them. It is obvious that the children want a new beginning that offers them stability and opportunities free of conflict, with access to water and sanitation, health care, education and protection.